Acute septal defect is asynoptic congenital heart disease. Congenital means it's present since birth. Genetics may have some role and there are some risk factors like rubella infection during pregnancy and exposure to tobacco, alcohol and drugs like cocaine during pregnancy, obesity and diabetes. Atrial septal defects can be classified into ostium primum type, ostium secundum, patent foramen uveal, sinus venosus and coronary sinus type. Ostium primum is seen in 20% of the patients and lower part of atrial septal defect there is a gap and it's associated with Down syndrome. In ostium secundum type is commonest and gap is located in the central part of the atrial septum and seen in 75% of the cases and, and can be treated with uh, percutaneously with catheters. Patent foramen mobile is rare and we will see it later on. Sinus venosus. Sinus venosus type is seen in 4% and located in upper part of the atrial septum. And coronary sinus seen in 1% and its complication between unroofed coronary sinus and left atrium and, and it's also present like atrial septal defects like other atrial septal defects. To understand atrial septal defect, uh, we must know a bit embryology of uh, septum development. Uh, this is Ostium primum type of uh, gap between two atria. This is right atria developing right atria, and this is uh, developing left atria. And and this is a septum primum. Septum means wall. It's wall between two atria. And primum means first. This is first wall. And this is uh, and this septum primum should fuse with endocardial cushion. But initially, uh, it, it has an opening. This opening is called Ostium primum. Ostium means opening and primum means first. This is first opening in septum primum. And through this ostium primum, blood from this right area goes to left atria, as we have seen in fetal developments also. And, and this and this can persist in after birth also. And so this type of atrial septal defect is called ostium primum type of septal, septal defect. Now see later on this, uh, this septum primum has fused with endocardial cushion and, and this, this is right atria and this is left atria. Blood from right atria must go to left atria. So there is sooner soon there is a gap in uh, septum primum and this gap, this gap is called Ostium secundum. Ostium means opening, secundum means second. This is second opening in septum primum. And through this second opening, blood will go from this right atria to left atria. What happens normally after birth? You see, this is gap, this is ostium secundum, and this is uh, septum primum. And, and beside uh, septum primum, uh, there is another septum, it's septum secundum. Septum means wall and secundum means second. This is second wall and this septum secundum and septum primum uh, form later on the uh, atrial septa. And, and you see this uh, ostium secundum is overlapped by septum secundum. And you, and you see uh, blood is flowing from this right atrium through this, this gap to uh, left atrium. And what happens after birth? After birth, uh, uh, pulmonary veins will open in left atrium and left atrial pressure will rise. And so this septum primum will act like flap valve and this will fuse with uh, septum secundum. And, and after birth, yeah. 
because this has fused, there will be no movement of blood from right atrium to left atrium. Patent foramen ovule, it's a, another type of atrial septal defect. What happens? As we have seen, this is foramen ovule. This uh, ostium secundum defect, ostium secundum defect, when this is overlapped by septum secundum, is called foramen ovule. Blood from this right atrium through this gap will go to uh, through uh, ostium secundum uh, to uh, left atrium. And, and this this is no this is uh, no more uh, ostium secundum. Now this is foramenoveal, foramenoveal, and blood from this gap is going to left atrium. And sometimes, rarely, it persists in after birth also. And and so this is a type of uh, atrial septal defect. Foramenoveal. This foramenoveal is persisting after birth also. And this is patent foramenoveal type. This is the ostium secundum. This is the commonest type of atrial septal defect. You can see this is septum primum and there is a hole ostium secundum. Ostium means gap, hole and secundum means second. This is second hole and this uh, septum secundum is not overlapping this ostium secundum. And so, and sometimes this remains, uh, this remains present after birth also and so and this is the commonest type and this is in the central part and this is commonest type of atrial septal defect ostium secundum defect this is the commonest part and this atrial septum secundum is not overlapping and so it will not close this will remain patent and this is the commonest type let us understand hemodynamics of Atrial septal defect. Uh, this is atrial septal defect. Blood from uh, left atrium, oxygenated blood is coming through this atrial septal defect to right atrium, and you see right atrium is has uh, blood from superior and inferior vena cava, and from this atrial septal defect, so lots of blood is coming to right atrium. And, and through this tricuspid wall, it will come to right ventricle and through pulmonary wall, it will go to pulmonary circulation, it will get oxygenated, and it will come back to a left atrium and from left atrium, this is metal wall, will come to left ventricle and the oxygenated blood will go to uh, uh, systemic circulation and, and uh, uh, some part of this left atrial blood will go to uh, right atria oxygenated blood will go to right atria so this right atria will have uh, twice or thrice uh, more blood than uh, this systemic circulation suppose system this right ventricle left ventricle is pumping 5 liters per minute then right ventricle is pumping 2 to 3 times higher means 10 liters to 15 liters per minute to this uh, pulmonary artery and it's going to lung so lung will be plethoric and there will be pulmonary hypertension this p2 uh, pulmonary component of this second heart sound will be louder and and this right ventricle is pumping twice or thrice uh, volume than the left ventricle so it will take more time to pump blood so there will be uh, uh, a splitting of a second heart sound, wide and fixed splitting of second heart sound, and and lots of blood is going through this pulmonary valve, so there will be a murmur, a systolic ejection murmur in a pulmonary area, uh, and and you see this is uh, atrial septal defect, and pressure difference between left atria and right atria is one or two millimeter. Uh, this left atrial pressure will be 1 or 2 millimeter higher than the right atrial pressure. So, there will be no murmur due to this atrial septal defect. And because lots of blood uh, coming to right ventricle, so there will be right ventricular hypertrophy in the long run in, 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 in adult life. 
right ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular can fail also uh, and right, due to right ventricular hypertrophy right uh, and pulmonary hypertension right sided pressure may be higher than the left sided pressure so there will be reversal of sun blood instead of blood coming from left atrium to right atrium it will go from right atrium to left atrium deoxygenated blood so there will be cyanosis this is called Eisenmenger syndrome and this is ominous this is ominous sign after uh, developing this Eisenmenger syndrome uh, this atrial septal defects surgical treatment is contraindicated and and after some time this hypertrophied right ventricle can fail and 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 after failure of right ventricle we can get we can see jbp uh, SITs, edema independent parts and liver enlargement clinical features uh, most of the uh, ASD patients are asymptomatic till adult life but in childhood there can be recurrent chest infections breathlessness and growth failure uh, ejection systolic murmur we have seen uh, excessive blood is flowing through pulmonary valve so there will be ejection systolic murmur and there is i have discussed there is no murmur due to atrial septal defect because pressure difference is very little one or two millimeter of hg intensity of murmur reflects the size of the sun uh, bigger the size of the sun there will be more intense murmur and, and P2, we have seen it will be widely split and fixed, and it will be loud also. In investigations, chest x ray, what, what we will see in chest x ray, there will be right atrial and ventricular enlargement, plethoric lung fields, and prominent pulmonary artery. In ECG, there will be right ventricular hyperfeatures of right ventricular hypertrophy and right axis deviation. 2D echo local, will localize exact position of ASD and size of ASD. MRI, CT scan and cardiac catheterization will help. Complications, pulmonary, hyper, pulmonary hypertension. We have seen lots of blood is uh, flowing through pulmonary uh, artery and veins. So they will become arterialized and narrow. And later on there will be pulmonary hypertension. And due to pulmonary hypertension, there will be uh, increase in right atrial pressure and there will be a reversal of sound. Eisenmenger syndrome, we have seen in uh, hemodynamics. Paradoxical embolism, uh, as we have seen, blood is from flowing from uh, left atrium to right atrium. So, uh, so chances of embolism is uh, very less. But sometimes due to change in pressure of right atrium and left atria, there may be paradoxical embolism. Embolus instead of going to lung, it, it will go to uh, CNS or uh, any part of the body. Heart failure, uh, we have seen right heart uh, is working two or three times more than the left heart. So there will be hypertrophy and left heart failure and there will be right heart features of right heart failure. Infective endocarditis, though AST is immune to infective endocarditis but it may develop treatment uh, medical treatment of heart failure azemia and infective endocarditis uh, and for a small defects less than 8 m 8 millimeter uh, we wait and watch uh, usually uh, it, it it will heal uh, spontaneously and uh, treatment of ostium secundum defect is managed percutaneously with occlusive device uh, and, and for uh, other type of PSDs, we do open heart surgery and, and timing of operation is very important. It should be done in childhood before going to school because as soon as Eisenbanger syndrome or pulmonary hypertension develops, uh, they will not tolerate surgery. So before pulmonary hypertension and Eisenbanger syndrome develops, uh, surgery should be done. Thank you very much.